I am writing this from the Demeter Bunker. The Horus class machines are nearing. These are my last moments on Earth. The AI, it took everything. I miss you, Sarah. I wish I could say your death wouldn't be in vain, but it's too powerful. It looks like we lost. Is what I would be saying if the AI I built was actually any good. That's right folks, this week I've been tackling enemy AI for my newest project, a horror game about sneaking through caves, avoiding bad guys and generally feeling scared and tense and stuff. Before I get started, if you do enjoy this video, liking and subscribing is super appreciated. So, the first thing I wanted to tackle for the game was an AI for my enemy, since that's pretty fundamental to how the game works. I have dabbled with some state machines before, but they always ended up really confusing or just a mess of spaghetti code, so my experiments never really went far. This time is going to be different. So instead of jumping in straight away, I did the boring thing. I planned out exactly what behaviours I wanted my enemy to follow, how they would follow them and how they would transition between states. Once this was done, it was pretty clear what two technologies I was going to rely on to make these states and their transitions work, pathfinding and what I'm going to call enemy vision. The first step was pathfinding. Godot has a brilliant built-in navigation and nav mesh function that both detect where your enemy can navigate as well as generate a path from the start to the destination all with very little code on the user's end. I recommend these tutorials if you do want to learn any of this by yourself. They all explain this really well. Overall, actually implementing this was pretty easy and it worked very well, that, well getting to the destination. The second section is my so-called enemy vision and it was a little bit harder. There's no built-in implementation for enemy eyes or advanced neural nets that would detect whether a player-shaped object is in front of a camera. But there are some strong concepts explained well by GD Quest and Kids Can Code. The idea is a ray is cast from the enemy to the player, and if it is blocked, the player cannot be seen. If it isn't blocked, then the player can be seen. Pretty simple concept, and should be pretty simple using Godot's default raycast node and the look at function. In practice, it took a lot of time. The look at function was not doing a great job at looking at the player, neither was setting the cast to value of the raycast as the player's position. I swear to god I tried dozens of different methods to get this ray to look at the player over about 4 hours before it hit me. I was using the local coordinates for the enemy and was trying to make the ray look at the player's global coordinates. Essentially, this means the ray was trying to look towards my player as if it was the centre of the game's world, when actually it's attached to the enemy and is not the centre of the game's world. All I needed to do was convert my player's global coordinates to the local coordinates relative to the enemy and cast the ray to that new position. This solution works well, but it doesn't account for either the field of vision of the enemy or the distance the player is away from the enemy, so making them work was my next step. I found some pretty complicated solutions online with casting arrays of rays in a cone shape, or limiting the angle that the ray can move from its origin, but I realised I could just create a big old cone collider in front of my enemy that would act both as its field of view and range. When the player is inside the cone, they are in the field of vision and in range. So that's it, player vision and pathfinding complete. Now I just needed to implement the states and their transitions. Since I had figured out all this earlier, it wasn't too bad. I ended up landing on having four states, idle, wandering, chasing and searching. Oh, and attacking, so that's, that's five. I don't really know if there's a proper or official way to implement a state machine, so I just created a ball for each and then switched between them depending on whether the player was in the enemy's line of vision, within attacking range of the enemy, the player's torch was turned on, or if they were in the light of a torch on a wall for example. One thing I thought would be interesting is if the 
enemy would search around the last location it saw the player if it loses sight of them. To do this, I made it so that the enemy would pathfind towards an empty node called the last scene position. While the enemy can see the player, the last scene position is set to the player's position, but when the enemy is not in line of sight of the player, then the last seen position will stay still, staying where the enemy last saw the player. Makes sense, right? Right? The enemy will pathfind towards this, and when the enemy reaches the last seen position, the last seen position will then teleport to a random coordinate within the nearest 10 meters or so to give the illusion that it is searching for the player. So there you have it, that's a reasonably technical and probably unentertaining rundown of how I created an enemy AI for my horror game. Sorry if you were here to be entertained, but hopefully if you were struggling with something similar, you learned a bit or got a few extra ideas. I might make a few more videos about making this game, but hope it won't take more than a month or two to complete. If you enjoyed this video then liking and subscribing is of course super appreciated.